to me now and I'll let you live. Our me hearties, get ready to splice the main brace because we've got pirate tales for ye today. But hold your parrots. These aren't the Jack Sparrow types we've all gotten used to over the years. These are real life hardened criminals who are out there on the seas today. The ship is ours! From the pirates who attacked a cargo ship to the pirate ship that ran afoul of the Royal Navy. Here, we bring you 20 pirates that messed with the wrong ship. <sighs> Number 20. Pirates attempted to hijack a cargo vessel. This online video shows some intense moments where a private security team engages in a gunfight with Somali pirates attempting to seize a cargo ship. A security guard is seen aiming a submachine gun as a speedboat approaches the vessel at high speed. Once the guard spots the boat, he fires warning shots that land close to it. After unloading multiple rounds into the speedboat, which strikes the ship's hull, a contractor is heard shouting, Where are they? Where are they? A chase ensues as two boats try to reach the ship's interior. Despite the onslaught of gunfire from security personnel, the speedboat eventually retreats. John Steed from Oceans Beyond Piracy explained the wild antics. He said the Eris 13 reported being approached by two skiffs. He said that the ship was transporting fuel from Djibouti to Mogadishu, Somalia's capital, and had eight Sri Lankan crew members. An official from Puntland, a semi-independent state, indicated that over 20 individuals boarded the ship off the northern coast of Somalia. Now, if you don't want to be key hauled or made to walk the plank, better hit like and subscribe. Time for the rare topic. In a high stakes operation, Russian Navy officer Alexei Ivanov was tasked with eliminating a pirate boat that had been terrorizing international waters. After a standoff, the pirates were finally arrested and their weapons seized. But the boat, now empty, still floated menacingly. The Russian knew it could be used again for illicit activities, so Alexei took an RPG and aimed. With a massive boom, the rocket hit the boat. The impact totally engulfed it in flames. It sank in minutes, leaving only smoky air and the sound of waves lapping against the Russian vessel. This spectacular photograph captured the Russian Special Forces operative in action and became an iconic image among Russians all over. Do you think the decision to destroy the boat was justified or too extreme? Is this a good way to deal with pirates? Remember to comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. And now to the next topic. Number 19, pirate's boat captured in the Indian Ocean. Back now to 2012. This was a time when the UK Ministry of Defense announced the capture of 13 Somali pirates by the Royal Navy in the Indian Ocean. The situation unfolded like this. Two US Navy ships, the RFA Fort Victoria and the USS Virginia, ordered the pirate boat to a halt. Despite warning shots from a Royal Navy helicopter, the pirate boat didn't stop. So Royal Marines sped up in boats, boarded the pirate vessel, and detained 13 pirates. Their next job was confiscating their firearms. The UK's Defense Secretary of the Era, Philip Hammond, stated that the British Marines should feel proud of their efforts as part of a NATO-led operation. A spokesperson for the Ministry of Defense confirmed that the individuals suspected of being pirates were brought to court on the RFA Fort Victoria. Number 18. Pirates Attack Maersk, Alabama 2009 was a peak year for Somali pirates, and that's when the video we're talking about right here was filmed. Somali armed men seized a container ship with at least 20 Americans on board, putting the Obama administration in a tricky situation. However, it quickly came to light from US military sources that the crew had regained control of the Marisk Line Limited container ship, which was shipping emergency supplies to Mombasa, Kenya. The captain of the Marisk, though, remained captive in a smaller boat. The Marisk Alabama was the sixth ship hijacked in 2009, but it had the distinction of being the first US flagged ship ever captured by Somali pirates. This event was the first time in roughly 200 years that an American ship had been taken hostage by pirates. Somali pirates were also expanding their reach beyond the Gulf of Aden. This whole situation set Western forces on a high stakes game of cat and mouse. 
After this incident, multiple countries, including Russia, China, France, and India, dispatched over 20 ships to monitor the busy maritime routes in the Gulf of Aden and parts of the Indian Ocean. These waters see about 16,000 ships passing through annually. Number 17. Sharda Foils Piracy Attempt in Gulf of Aden In 2017, the Indian Navy ship Sharda, deployed to the Gulf of Aden to combat piracy, came to the rescue of the Liberian cargo ship Lord Mountbatten during a pirate attack. An offshore security vessel had been stationed in the Gulf. Then, panic set in, as Navy officials received an emergency call from the Liberian ship. What was going on? In a word, pirates. The distressed ship reported that two suspected mother ships, along with seven to eight skiffs, were attempting to rob it southwest of Oman's Salalah port. Around 7 p.m., the INS Sharda, just a few kilometers away, reached the scene. It spotted two dows and eight skiffs in the vicinity. Three of the skiffs made a quick getaway. Special troops from INS Sharda's Marcos unit, aided by an armed helicopter, investigated the remaining boats. While en route to the Mediterranean, Indian naval ships Mumbai, Tarkash, Trishul, and Aditya made a stop in the Gulf of Aden to rescue another cargo ship, MVOS-35, from pirates. It was a busy day for the pirates. On the night of April 8th, one day after the prior attack, attackers boarded the OS-35. Thankfully, the captain and crew barricaded themselves in a safe room and remained unharmed. Number 16. Somali Pirate Attack Somali pirates made another attempt to hijack multiple Indian-flagged commercial ships in the Gulf of Aden, but the Indian Navy foiled their plans. Pirates from Somalia themselves confirmed that the Navy was vigilant and successfully thwarted the attack intended for Indian cargo ships. We lost our friends two days ago. They called us early Saturday morning to say they had attacked Indian ships, but the Indian Navy stopped them. Mohammed Ahmed, one of the pirates, told Somalia report over the phone. Around 26 Somali pirates were captured and arrested, their three boats and weaponry seized. Pirate adjacent, yeah, that's a thing now, sources revealed that some individuals suspected to be pirates managed to escape in two speedboats. I can't specify the number of weapons they had, but they were well armed using AK-47s, RPGs, machine guns, and explosives, the source added. According to insider information, the majority of the 26 arrested pirates belonged to the Majartin and Hawiya subclans. These pirates are known to operate in various areas, including Harardhiri, Hobyo, Garakad, and Seal Tanane. This is a new war, and we have to hunt down the Indians, one pirate stated. Number 15. Navy Foils Piracy Attack In 2011, Indian Navy thwarted a pirate attack on the cargo ship MV Nafis-1 west of Mumbai. The Navy's maritime reconnaissance plane spotted the Iranian-flagged vessel and maintained constant surveillance. The guided missile cruiser INS Mysore was dispatched to intercept the ship, accompanied by two helicopters and a 24-member team of the Navy's elite Marine Commandos. Upon investigation, the Marcos found two AK-47s and another gun cleverly hidden in an empty gas tank. Back in July of that year, the MV Nafis-1 set sail from Shah Bahar in Iran, headed for an undisclosed location. Intelligence received by the Indian Navy hinted that the ship might have been involved in unlawful activities like smuggling. From what's gathered, the ship likely carried weapons, ammunition, and other contraband items. Number 14. Somali Pirates Attack German Navy Supply Ship In the Gulf of Aden off the coast of Somalia, a pirate boat bit off more than it could chew when it mistook the German Navy's Braun-class FGS Spessart tanker for a merchant vessel and fired at it. As the pirate boat approached the Spessart, it opened fire, only to have the German sailors return fire. The Spessart then chased the pirate boat and called for backup. Ships from Greece, Spain, the Netherlands, and the United States answered the call, joining the pursuit along with a Spanish military plane and two U.S. Cobra helicopters. After a five-hour chase, the Greek Navy apprehended the seven pirates on board. Their weapons, including RPGs and assault guns, were confiscated. The pirates were soon taken aboard the German ship Rhineland Pfalz, where they had some serious questions to answer. This was a big oops moment. 
Number 13, Canadian crew foils Somali pirate attack. After a Norwegian tanker faced an attack from Somali pirates in the Gulf of Aden, Canadian and American warships pursued the culprits for seven hours. NATO revealed that the chase came to an end when warning shots were fired at the pirates' small boat. The pirates had aimed to attack the Norwegian-flagged MV Front Arden late one Saturday night. However, the crew managed to evade them and sent out a distress call. Portuguese Lieutenant Commander Alexandre Santos Fernandes stationed on a warship in the Gulf and Commander Chris Davies, based at NATO's maritime headquarters in England, provided these details. According to Davies, the pirates inadvertently crossed paths with the Canadian warship HMCS Winnipeg, which was escorting a World Food Program supply vessel. The USS Halliburton, also in the vicinity, joined the pursuit. Fernandez noted that helicopters were deployed from both warships, and naval officers used microphones to shout warnings at the pirates. Eventually, warning shots were fired. The pirates threw most of their weapons overboard by the time NATO forces boarded their boat, where they discovered a rocket-propelled grenade. The pirates were questioned, disarmed, and then released. Canadian Prime Minister from the time, Stephen Harper, speaking at a summit in Trinidad, lauded the crew of the HMCS Winnipeg, saying, They're doing tremendous work. Harper mentioned that Canada had been participating in NATO patrols in the Gulf of Aden for some time, aiding World Food Program shipments. A NATO officer clarified that, under Canadian law, the pirates could not be charged, as they neither targeted Canadians nor Canadian interests, and the crime did not occur within Canadian jurisdiction. This incident really brought to light the complexities of tackling piracy in international waters near Somalia, where often the practical and legal challenges lead to the release of captured pirates. Number 12. South Korean Navy Thwarts Pirates in Indian Ocean South Korean Navy soldiers successfully stormed a ship in the Indian Ocean that had been captured by, you guessed it, Somali pirates. They ate pirates and managed to free all 21 crew members in the process. The SEAL Special Forces boarded the South Korean chemical ship just before dawn. They went room to room, freeing hostages and taking down pirates in close combat. Another five pirates were captured during the operation. The ship's South Korean captain was shot in the stomach during the raid, but he was okay, thankfully. No soldiers were injured in the action. The successful rescue operation was an awesome success for South Korea's Navy after what had been a pretty tricky period. They had recently faced domestic criticism for what many saw as a lackluster response to North Korea's increasingly feisty behavior. The rescue operation was commanded by President Lee Myung-bak. He dished out praise to the troops for their exceptional performance under some pretty rough circumstances. As for the crew on the 11,500-ton ship, when it was hijacked, there was a mixed group. There were eight South Koreans, a couple of Indonesians, and 11 guys from Myanmar. The vessel was headed to Sri Lanka from the UAE, but it ended up in a real drama. President Lee had instructed the ship's captain to take all possible measures to ensure the crew's safety. In response to the distress call, Seoul dispatched a destroyer patrolling in the Gulf of Aden to intervene. General Lee mentioned that the special forces made their move after finding out that the pirates' mothership was departing from a port in Somalia. President Lee commended Suk Hai Kyun, the 57-year-old captain of the ship, for his clever antics. Pirates sought to take the vessel to the Somalian coast fast, but the skipper helped us earn time by maneuvering the vessel in a serpentine manner. During the operation, the warship fired warning shots and moved close to the captured ship to divert the pirates' attention. A Lynx helicopter provided cover fire as the soldiers boarded the ship. Assistance was also rendered by a U.S. ship, which dispatched a helicopter to safely evacuate the injured South Korean captain. Number 11. Dutch Marines Storm Cargo Ship Seized by Somali Pirates In 2010, the Dutch Navy pulled off a notable win in the ongoing battle against international piracy. Soldiers helicoptered in to reclaim a hijacked German container ship, the MS Taipan, following a gunfight with Somali hijackers. During the incident, one Dutch Marine sadly got hit and was left to tend to some minor injuries. Ten armed Somali pirates had boarded the MS Taipan early in the morning. One thing about pirates is that they don't laze about in bed all day. They're always up bright and early. Before sounding the alarm, the 15-member German crew locked themselves in a secure area on the ship. Support was summoned from the Dutch frigate Tromp, 
which managed to reach the MS Taipan about 700 kilometers off the Somali coast. The German crew had disabled the ship's engines, making it easier for the Dutch frigate to approach. The ship was nearly stationary when the pirates boarded. After failed negotiations with the pirates, a helicopter gunship from the Dutch frigate Trump took off and fired machine guns at the MS Taipan's bridge. In a scene that could have been right out of a James Bond film, the helicopter then hovered over the ship's bow, allowing a team of well-armed soldiers to leap onto the deck, storm the vessel, and regain control. Number 10. Pirates attack French Navy ship by mistake. In a nighttime operation in the Indian Ocean, Somali pirates mistakenly targeted a French Navy flagship, thinking it was a cargo vessel. Wow. That was quite a blunder. I mean, just look at this ship. Does that look like an East Mark to you? The French Navy ship, responsible for coordinating all French forces in the region, successfully thwarted the pirate attack and then pursued them at sea. Admiral Christophe Pradzuk, a spokesperson for the French military, said that the attack was repelled and they managed to capture five pirates. Fortunately, no one was injured during the incident. The pirates had tried to hijack the La Somme, an 18,000 ton, 160 meter long fuel supply ship that also serves as the command center for all French forces operating in the Indian Ocean, whether on land, sea, or air. Realizing their mistake, the pirates tried to escape. La Somme chased them for about an hour before capturing one of their skiffs. Prazuk mentioned, that they found five individuals on board, but no weapons, suggesting the pirates had thrown everything overboard. Number nine, Navy warship INS Trishul prevents pirate attack. The Indian stealth frigate INS Trishul quickly thwarted a pirate attack on the commercial vessel Jag Amar in the Gulf of Aden. The action involved dispatching an armed helicopter and marine troops. Jag Amar, an Indian flagged bulk cargo ship with 26 Indians on board, sent out a distress call around 12.30 p.m. Responding swiftly, the 4,000-ton multi-role INS Trishul deployed its Chetak helicopter and marine soldiers. One group of soldiers reached the cargo ship via the chopper, while another arrived using an inflatable boat from the INS Trishul. The 12 pirates surrendered without resistance. They were found to have an AK-47 assault gun with 27 rounds in the clip, as well as other piracy equipment like grapnels, ladders, ropes, fuel drums, and tools. After confiscating their weapons, the pirates were released and sent back to sea in their own boat. The MV Jagamar resumed its journey to Jubail, Saudi Arabia, later in the evening after a cleanup by the soldiers. Number 8. Crude Oil Tanker Pirates off Somalia's coast seized an oil tanker carrying eight Sri Lankans. The ship was en route from Djibouti to Mogadishu, Somalia's capital, when it was diverted to Alula, a port in northeastern Somalia's semi-autonomous Puntland region. The diversion was ordered by the district commissioner in Alula, Ali Shire Mohammed Osman. The ship's crew sent out a distress call, warning that fast boats were approaching them from behind. Abdirisak Mohammed Darir, who oversees Puntland's anti-piracy operations, denied any involvement from his forces in the hijacking. He attributed it to Somali pirates. Sometimes the anti-pirates and the pirates can be hard to tell apart in this part of the world. The vessel was identified as the Eris 13, a small tanker transporting fuel. The Sri Lankan government confirmed that eight of its nationals were on board. A UN study showed that the number of pirate groups operating in Somalia had fallen from 237 in 2011 to just 15 in 2015 to 16. However, the study said that this decline is fragile and reversible. We can't take anything for granted. If we lose focus, those pirates will be right back in the game. Number 7. Somali Forces Rescue Hijacked Dubai Ship In 2008, Somali forces managed to reclaim a hijacked ship carrying food for an impoverished African nation. Meanwhile, a high-ranking security official criticized U.S. troops patrolling off Somalia's coast for not doing enough to combat the uptick in piracy. Abdullahi Saeed Samatar, the security affairs minister in Puntland, revealed that seven pirates were captured and three were injured during the operation to recover the Dubai-flagged ship Al-Khalij. Samatar said, It is sad that the American forces off the coast of Somalia are here for fun and not to fight the pirates. That said, the U.S. Navy has been leading international patrols along Somalia's enormous coastline, which is Africa's longest and near-crucial maritime trade routes linking the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean. Somalia doesn't have its own navy, and its provisional government 
Established in 2004 with UN assistance, has struggled to maintain order. So the US is picking up the tab for this one. The ship's recovery by security forces wasn't publicized until after the hostages were released. In response to a string of attacks, including the capture of a Spanish tuna fishing boat, the US and France drafted a UN resolution. This resolution allowed nations to pursue and detain pirates off the Somali coast. Jean-Maurice Repair, France's UN representative at the time, explained that the resolution would empower countries to chase pirate vessels into territorial waters, apprehend suspects, and prosecute them. Early in 2008, 13 nations from the Western Indian Ocean, the Gulf of Aden, and the Red Sea signed onto a plan that involves sharing information about piracy incidents and pursuing those responsible. What made this particular attack more concerning was the indication that the attackers seemed to have military training. Number six, pirates versus US Navy. Somali pirates aboard a ship loaded with tanks and heavy weaponry reportedly engaged in a violent altercation that escalated into a shootout. It's believed that three pirates, although the pirates disputed these reports, the Ukrainian cargo ship Fina was hijacked and soon found itself currently anchored off the coast of Somalia. The USS Howard, along with several other American ships, surrounded it. The pirates demanded a $20 million ransom, but the American naval presence prevented the weapons from being moved inland. Pirate spokesman Sugule Ali disputed these reports. We didn't dispute over a single thing, let alone have a shootout. We are happy on the ship, and we are celebrating aid, Ali added. Nothing has changed. Soon though, American aircraft were patrolling the skies above the blue and white Ukrainian ship. The ship, along with its cargo of 33 Soviet-made tanks and other firearms, was hijacked while transiting the Gulf of Aden, one of the world's busiest shipping lanes, en route to the Kenyan port of Mombasa. Number five, Chinese Navy combats pirates. On April 22, 2015, China's 19th Escort Task Force handed over its duties in the Gulf of Aden to the 20th Escort Task Force. Since late 2008, China has been involved in maritime protection missions in this area with the go-ahead from the UN Security Council and the Somali government. To date, over 50 Chinese military ships have been deployed, completing more than 800 missions and protecting over 5,000 ships, both Chinese and foreign. The missions can be risky. For instance, on November 20th, 2010, four armed pirates hijacked the Chinese commercial vessel Tai Ankao. As rescuers from another nation approached the sinking ship, pirates fired at them. In response, the Chinese team immediately dispatched two speedboats and a helicopter carrying four personnel to execute their anti-hijacking plan. Eventually, 21 crew members were rescued. Li Zhenhua, one of the leaders of the protection force, shared some of his experiences. We've faced situations like this dozens of times, and six of those were especially perilous, Li noted. There have been moments when we were less than 100 meters away from the pirates. The risk of them firing at us is always there, but retreating has never crossed our minds. Number four, the Indian Navy intercepted a pirate mothership. In a major operation, the Indian Navy intercepted a pirate mothership and arrested 61 Somali pirates rescuing 13 crew members in the process. The action unfolded about 900 kilometers off India's western coast. The Indian Navy released this statement. INS Kalpeni intercepted a pirate mothership named Vega 5 in the Arabian Sea, approximately 600 nautical miles west of India, on the night of March 12th, around 2100 hours. 13 crew members were rescued and 61 pirates were apprehended. On March 11, 2011, a naval Dornier aircraft was dispatched to assist the MV Vancouver Bridge, which was under pirate attack. During that mission, it located Vega 5, the pirates' main ship. Upon seeing the naval aircraft, the pirates abandoned their plans, and the mothership attempted to leave the area. Indian naval ships Kukri, a missile frigate, and Kalpeni, a water jet fast attack craft, already on anti-piracy watch, were directed to intercept and inspect Vega 5. The interception took place on the night of March 12, 2011. In a surprise move, the pirate mothership launched two skiffs that opened fire on INS Kalpeni. The naval ship responded with limited gunfire. Shortly after, it was observed that Vega 5 had caught fire, likely due to its extra fuel drums. 
individuals were seen jumping off the ship. INS Kalpeni, in coordination with INS Kukri, managed to capture 74 people, 61 pirates, and 13 members of the original fishing crew. Initial investigations revealed the pirates were armed with between 80 and 90 small arms, as well as some larger weapons likely to be RPGs. The fishing boat Vega 5, registered in Mozambique, had been hijacked on December 28, 2010, and had been used as a mother vessel for piracy activities since then. Number 3. Seaborne Spirit Cruise Ship Pirate Attack This attack occurred at 5.50 a.m. on November 5, 2005, about 115 kilometers off the Somali coast, targeting the ship Spirit. A mothership dispatched two pirate speedboats to go after the vessel. The cruise ship came under fire from both machine guns and rocket-propelled grenades. One RPG's rocket motor got lodged in a room's wall and had to be disassembled later by sailors from the USS Gonzalez. Another RPG reportedly hit the bow and bounced off. No one on board was injured, but Som Bahadur Gurung, the ship's master at arms, was grazed by gunfire while using a long-range acoustic device to fend off the pirates. The pirates were ultimately deterred by the LRAD's intense sound wave. On May 16, 2007, Queen Elizabeth II awarded the Queen's Gallantry Medal to security officer Michael Groves and the Queen's commendation for bravery to British shipmate Som Bahadur Gurung, a former Gurkha, in recognition of their courage. After the attack, the ship rerouted to Port Victoria in the Seychelles for repairs instead of its originally planned destination of Mombasa, Kenya. Following repairs, the ship made its way to Singapore and resumed its schedule. Number 2. Malaysian Special Forces Retake Cargo Ship On January 20th, 2011, the MT Bunga Laurel was shipping vital chemicals to Singapore managed by a company called Misk Berhad. Given its proximity to Somalia, the Gulf of Aden is notorious for pirate activity. An RMN vessel, Bunga Mas Lima, was escorting it to prevent any piracy. After Bunga Mas Lima entered a designated safe zone, it headed back to base. That's when things went south. About two hours after parting ways, MT Bunga Laurel signaled it was in trouble. Misk tried to reach out, but no one answered. Three minutes later, Bunga Mas Lima radioed Misk to say Bunga Laurel was under pirate attack. By that time, seven of the 18 Somali pirates had already boarded the ship. The 23 crew members activated the security alert system, shut down the engines and lights, and took refuge in a fortified room. The pirates attempted to break in, but failed. Communication was impossible since the pirates weren't interested in talking, and Captain Nasri didn't speak English. Little did the pirates know that Bunga Maslima had a team of elite Pascal soldiers on board specifically trained for such situations. The Pascal forces arrived promptly, followed by an attack helicopter. Faced with this, the pirates quickly surrendered. Number 1. Russian Marines Storm Black Sea Cargo Ship Russia's defense ministry reported that a Russian warship in the Black Sea fired warning shots and boarded a cargo ship it claimed was en route to Ukraine. Russia had withdrawn from a UN-Turkey agreement allowing Ukraine to transport food via the Black Sea. Both Russia and Ukraine have warned that ships sailing to the other's ports could be suspected of carrying weapons. According to Russia, the warning shots were fired because the captain of the dry cargo ship, flying under the flag of Palau and named Sukru Okan, didn't comply with directives. The ship was reportedly headed to the port of Ismail in Ukraine. Marine traffic data, however, indicated that the ship was bound for the port of Sulina in Romania, near Ismail. A Russian warship contacted the 12-person Turkish crew as they were en route to Ismail. The ship then tried to retreat to Turkish waters to consult with the Coast Guard and other officials. A helicopter lifted off from the Russian warship and additional warning shots were fired. The crew took cover as Russian forces boarded the ship. Footage was captured by the Sukru Okan crew showing them on the deck while a Russian helicopter hovered above. A search of the ship's cabins conducted alongside the captain lasted about an hour. The crew's documentation and passports were also examined, according to an official from the shipping company who wasn't on board at the time of the incident. Did you prefer them when they all had one leg and a parrot on their shoulder? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now.
See you next time.